Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. My co-hosts, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags are here for the game. I'm going to play another game, I believe it's game 102. From the 1978 Boston Red Sox season. Game 3 of the series against the rubber game against the Kansas City Royals. Here at Fenway Park in Boston. So let's get this game underway. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. So Bill the Spaceman Lee is on the mound for the Red Sox. He'll be facing a Kansas City lineup as this falls. I believe this is a Sunday, um, July 30th game. I know it's July 30th, but I believe it's on a Sunday, being game three of the series. Uh, Freddie Patek, the shortstop, will bat first. Batting second and playing right field today is getting a start is Joe Zeb. Batting third, the DHL Cowens. Batting cleanup, Amos Otis, the center fielder. Daryl Porter will be the catcher, batting fifth. Batting sixth, the first baseman, John Wathen. Clint Hurdle is the left fielder, bats seventh. Frank White, the second baseman, bats eighth. And Jerry Terrell is the third baseman, getting a start today, batting ninth. So that's your lineup for the Kansas City Royals. The Red Sox behind Lee are, are Rice, Lynn, and Evans in the outfield. Hobson, Burleson, Remy, and Scott in the infield. And Colin Fisk behind the plate. Now, we're also playing a 1977 out of the park baseball game in which we have traded away Butch Hobson. So Butch Hobson will not be on the Red Sox in that game and night, in, in that, um, yeah, game in 1978 when we play that season replay. Um, also, I'm not sure if we're going to be able, we're going to get Remy or not. In 1977, they wanted to, the only player they would accept for Jerry Remy would be, was Jim Rice in a trade, and we're definitely not going to do that. Um, Bill Lee still is in the bullpen in 1977, so we're not sure if he's going to make it to the starting rotation in 1978 or not. Uh, and we have plans to make Bob Stanley a starter possibly. Uh, in 1978, or even possibly later on in 1977. We'll see. But anyway, uh, this is 1978, game number 102. And Bill Lee looks in for the sign from Fisk. Bill Lee comes in with a 4-6 and six record, 3.70 ERA, 134 innings pitched, 137 hits allowed, 36 walks and 33 strikeouts, and has surrendered 13 homers. Freddie Patek comes in hitting 271 with two homers and 28 runs batted in. So he looks in for the sign. Here's the windup and the pitch. It's going to be off the four column. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Rice is there and makes the out for out number one. So we're still debating whether or not to get the 19, uh, 2018 version of Stratomatic. We may get it just to uh, so we can get the new season from 2017, and um, so we can get the uh, cards at a really re reduced price. So we're still debating on that. We'll see. I believe it's next week that the uh, uh, I think it's a week from from yesterday, a week from today actually. I think is going to be opening day. So uh, 
or possibly the week after, but I think it is next week. So we'll have to decide soon whether or not we're going to do that. I know Stratomatic, uh, Delaware and Espo Strat are going down to the festivities there and we're still debating whether or not we're going to go or not. Pro- I'm probably leaning towards no, but still always a possibility. Uh, so we'll see what we can do there. So next up is Joe Zeb. So Joe Zeb hitting just 209 with eight runs batted in. And 86 at bats. Here's the windup in the pitch by Lee. And it's going to be off the one column of Zeb. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Lynn's under it and makes the catch for out number two. So two outs in the Royals first. Brings up L. Cowens. L. Cowens hitting 299 on the season with two homers and 37 runs batted in. Lee looks in for the sign from Fisk. Nods his head. Kicks and delivers. It's going to be off the four column of Lee. And that's going to be a ground ball to Scott. Scott is a two range. Gets in front of it. And flips over to Lee for out number three. So after one one half inning, it's Kansas City nothing. The Red Sox coming up. Paul, Paul Splitcheroff on the mound. Splitcheroff comes in having a great season so far, 15-5 and five, with a 3.27 earn run average. 168 innings pitched, 162 hits allowed. 47 walks and 50 strikeouts and has surrendered 10 homers. So the Red Sox lineup is going to be Rick Burleson leading it off and playing short. Batting second is the second baseman, Jerry Remy. The left fielder, Jim Rice, bats third. Batting cleanup today, Kali Stremski has another day off. Uh, I'm not sure if he's on the DL or not. We'll have to check that out. Colin Fisk bats cleanup. And is behind the plate. Ooh, Bob Bailey <laughs> is going to bat all the way up to number five. Wow. And he's going to be the DH today. So Yastrzemski must be injured. Bob Bailey is starting at DH. Batting six, the center fielder, Fred Lynn. Batting seventh, the right fielder, Dwight Evans. George Scott all the way down to eighth spot. Batting the first baseman. And Butch Hobson, the third baseman, bats ninth. So let's just give it a quick look here. Yastrzemski is on the bench here, so he's not on the DL. So perhaps he's just getting some rest. So he is eligible. And he is a he is a left in and batter and Spitrov is a lefty pitcher, so that could be why. So Rick Burleson comes in hitting two seventy seven with a homer and thirty two runs batted in. Here's a wind up in the pitch by Spitrov. And that's gonna be a ground ball to second. White is a one range, so he should get to this one. Gets in front of it. And Makes the play over to Wathen for out number one. So Jerry Remy comes to the plate now. Remy's been somewhat hot lately. He's hitting 307 with two homers and 34 runs batted in. And it's going to be out the five column of switch off. And it'll be a pop up to Patek. He's under it and makes the catch for out number two. So to bring up Jim Rice. Jim Rice hitting 317 with 29 homers and 87 runs batted in. The AL MVP for 1978. See what he can do here against Splitchock. And it's going to be off the five column. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Hurdles under it and makes the catch. So nothing doing for the Red Sox in the first. And after one full, no score. So Amos Otis comes to the plate to lead off for the Orioles in the second. He comes in having a great season so far, hitting 369 with 20 homers and 55 runs batted in. Already almost to his home run total of 22 and only in 172 less at bats. So he's on a pace to hit possibly 30 home runs or at least 25 anyway. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. 
Lynn drifts over and makes the catch. And having played, well, playing this now after having played a bunch of uh, out of the park baseball um, games, definitely I'm appreciating out of the park baseball a little bit more. Um, I do like the animation and the a lot of the stats and everything in um, out of the park baseball. Um, I still like this game slightly better, I think, just because it's got all the splits and everything, so you kind of know your percentages and um, you know you kind of see the engine behind it. Yeah, but I am appreciating out of the park baseball a lot more than I did before. There's a lot of good features of it, and it's a great price. Definitely, uh, definitely is a lot cheaper than this game, and um, has a lot to it. You get all the seasons for it, so I'm definitely. Just kind of touching the surface of the out of the park baseball, but I'm liking the uh, the open world and the different type of game, the open world and the um, GM possibilities, along with all the trading and um, team chemistry and all that stuff you got to pay attention to. So definitely having fun with that. Uh, if you haven't checked that out yet, check out our 1977 out of the park open world. Um, 1977 Boston Red Sox team that Mr. Brody is the GM and manager of. He's made a whole bunch of great acquisitions in um, just the second month of the season. And his team's starting to gel and uh, climbing their way up the standings after they, at one point, were in last place. And now they're kind of towards the middle of the pack moving up. So check that out as we're having a lot of fun with that one trying to uh, to win a division title in 1977. So Daryl Porter comes in now with one down. He comes in hitting 250 with 12 homers and 59 runs batted in. Here's a windup in the pitch by Lee. And that's going to be the Royals' first base runner. Is that the first base runner? Uh... No, it's not. Lee has three walks today. <laughs> My bad on that one. First base runner this inning. So one on and one out as Lee has given up three walks now. So that brings up the first baseman, John Wathen, getting a start today. He's hitting 312 with a homer and 11 runs batted in. So Scott holding Porter on first. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Rice is under and makes the catch. So Porter back to first. So two outs now for Clint Hurdle. Hurdle comes in hitting 260 with five homers and 45 runs batted in. And that's going to be a ground ball to Remy. Grabs it over to Scott. And that's it for Kansas City in the second. So after one and a half, no score. So Colin Fisk will lead it off for the Red Sox, the number four hitter. Comes in hitting 304 with 13 homers and 56 runs batted in. And it'll be off the four column with switch off. And that's going to be a ground ball to Patek. He is a two range. So one to two will be a hit. He gets in front of it. And fires over to Wathen at first for out number one. So one down for Bob Bailey. Bob Bailey hit, comes in hitting an atrocious 148 with just two runs batted in. He is a much better hitter from the left side of the I mean from the right side of the plate. So let's see if he can get on base here. That's going to be off the three column. And he'll strike out swing. So Bailey unable to get on. As his woes continue in the 1978 season. And that's one thing we're definitely making sure we do not get Bob Bailey in the Out of the Park Baseball 18 version of 1978. <laughs> he will not be on our list. In fact, he'll be, well, he will be on a list, just on our, a list of players not to get. <laughs> so Fred Lynn up now. Fred Lynn comes in hitting 292 with 20 homers and 66 runs batted in. So he's on a pace still to hit, still has a possibility of hitting 30 home runs. He's just two behind what he hit for the season in 170 or so at bats less. And it's going to be off the sixth column. 
So that's going to be a ground ball to white. Range check. Gets in front of it. And makes the play over to Wathen for, for the final out of the Red Sox second. So after two full, no score. Good pitchers duel so far early on. So that brings up Frank White. Frank White, the number eight hitter, comes in hitting 263 with six homers and 44 runs batted in. Settles into the box. Lee looks in for the sign from Fisk, kicks and delivers. And it'll be a ground ball to Scott. He'll take it to the bag himself. So one gone in the Kansas City third. Let's take a look at some scores from around the league. California on top of Baltimore, 2-0. Oakland ahead of Cleveland, 2-0 also. Johnson and Paxton currently dueling. And the Red Sox had uh, Mike Paxton on their team in 77. And he he would go to Cleveland in 78, I believe, for Dennis Eckersley. He was part of the deal there. But we've already gotten rid of him um, in the 1977 season. So I'm not sure if we're going to get Eckersley in 78 or not. We'll have to see on that one. But we did get a couple of, of good starting pitchers for our 1977 team. So Seattle and Detroit are tied at three. And good news, Minnesota leads the New York 1-0. Toronto leads Milwaukee 7-6, so that's good too. Hopefully that'll keep up. Cardi hit his 29th home run for the Blue Jays. Wow, Cardi, Rico Cardi already with 29 homers at the end of July. Chicago shutting out Texas 4 to nothing, And here in Boston, there's no score. So Jerry Terrell getting a start at third up now. Hitting just 179 with an RBI. And he's going to hit one to right. Evans is under and makes the catch. Actually, that one drifted on him and he has the dive for it. I wish they would give some indication of whether or not it's gonna. It's the same sound whether or not it's a routine flyout or a great diving catch like that. So it'd be kind of nice to see a little more, little better, anim, different animation on something that they have to dive for, kind of like out of the park does. But anyway, Freddie Patek up now. Two outs and the base is empty. Corners are playing in for Patek. Flew out his first time up. And this time he'll ground out to Hobson. One hopper. Fires over to Scott. And the Royals go in order in the third. The Red Sox will send Evans, Scott, and Hobson the bottom third of the order up against Splitchoff. Red Sox still looking for their first base runner. Evans hitting 270 with 16 homers and 61 runs batted in. And it's going to be a range check by Porter. <laughs> Mr. Brody and Miss Mags getting into it a little bit there. <laughs> and that's going to be a foul out. Looks like Porter's going to have this one. So one gone in the Red Sox third. Brings up the boomer, George Scott, hitting 237 with eight homers and 30 runs batted in. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Otis drifts over and makes the catch. So the number nine hitter, Hobson, up now. Hobson hitting 286 with nine homers and 40 runs batted in. And it'll be a ground out to Patek. Fires over to Wathen, and that'll do it. So Switchoff has retired the first nine Red Sox batters to start the game. Lee not quite as sharp as he has allowed four walks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> I was looking at, Lee did not give a, hadn't give out three walks. I was looking at the top part of it, but should have been looking at the uh, bottom part. He's only given up one walk today. So my bad on that one. And that was, I think, the first base runner that 
to reach last inning or whatever it was the inning that that first walk happened all right so we're back on the right page now so we have no co-host now to tell me <laughs> so Joe Zeb Zeb flew out his first time up he'll lead it off for the Royals here in the fourth that's gonna be a ground ball back to Lee flips over to Scott at first for out number one. L. Cowan's up now. Grounded out his first time up. And that'll be the second walk Lee is given up as Cowan's reaches on a one-out walk. Amos Otis flew out his first time up. This time pops up. Burleson calls for it and makes the catch. So Daryl Porter now with two outs in the Cowan's at first. And yeah, Miss Mags has come back to join us on her birthday. So Miss Mags turns six today, so happy birthday to Miss Mags. It's your birthday, Mags. <laughs> so all right, so oh, this could be dangerous. It looks like Porter's gonna get a good pitch date here finally. Uh he'll pop. Is that a line out or a pop up? Yeah. More like a line out than a pop up, but they say it pops up. And Hobson makes the catch, and that is it for the Royals in the fourth. So the Red Sox will send Burleson, Remy, and Rice up, looking to get a runner on base here. Red Sox still without a hit. And until now, as Burleson hits this one a long way off the wall, Otis throws it back in, but not before Burleson is at second with a double. So a wall ball double. So a runner in scoring position now for Remy, who popped up his first time up. And it's off his three column. That's going to be a fly ball to center. Don't think it's going to be deep enough for Burleson to tag. Jim Rice with an RBI opportunity. Chance to get the Red Sox on the board. He flew out his first time up. And that's going to be off the three column. And he's going to get hit by a pitch on the wrist. And looks like it looks like he'll be alright. Shakes it off. I believe that was an injury that he got in the nineteen end of the 1975 season to keep him from playing in the World Series. I think he broke his wrist. His, one of his wrists. So Colin Fisk up now with runners on first and second. See if he can deliver the run here. And that's going to be off the two column. And that'll be a fly ball to left. Looks like Hurdle is there. Got to adjust a bit and makes the catch. So it'll be up to Bob Bailey. Yay. Let's see if he can deliver and get an RBI here. Oh, this is the best column for Bailey to be on. Let's see what he can do here. <laughs> and it finds that ground out, of course. So Bailey unable to deliver. Surprise, surprise. And after four full, still no score. John Wathen will lead it off for the Kansas City here in the fifth. Wathen flew out his first time up. Gets a good one to hit here. And Kansas City is going to get their first hit off Lee. A leadoff double here in the fifth. So Clint Hurdle with a chance to put Kansas City on the board first. Ground out his first time up. And he's going to give this one a ride. Evans goes back at the wall and makes the catch. So Clinton gave, uh, Hurdle gave that one a ride, but Evans is there to make the catch for the first out of the fifth. As Wathen holds at second. Frank White now grounded out his first time up. He'll get a good one hit here. And this will get the run home. That's going to go 
off the base of the wall. Wathen easily scores, and White will end up at second with a RBI double. So Kansas City first to strike. That might be all it takes with the way these pitchers have been pitching. So Jerry Terrell up now. He has a chance to drive in a run. And it flies out to Evans in right. And it looks like he's going to try to... Nope. Looks like White Bluff there as Evans delivered a strike to third. He definitely would have been a dead duck there. So good thing he held up. So two outs now for Patek. 0 for 2 so far. And hits one to the opposite field. Evans is there and makes the catch. Kansas City gets on the board. On the RBI double by White. So the Red Sox now trail by one. Split off with the lead for the first time today. Lynn Evans and Scott up. Lynn grounded out his first time up. And this time he'll strike out. Swing and a miss. So I bring up Dwight Evans. Fouled out his first time up. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Oh, hurdle only a four range. So one through 11 will be a hit. And it's going to be just barely gets in there. Drops in. And Hurdle's unable to handle it, too. And so Evans will overruns it. And Hurdle and Evans will be at second with a single advancing on the air by Hurdle. So the Red Sox with a tying run in scoring position now for Scott, who flew out his first time up. And he lines right out. Wathen catches it basically in self-defense. Evans holds it second. And we have two outs now. So, see if Pochopsky can deliver here. Grounded out his first time at bat. And he will. It's going to be delivered to Hurdle. And we're going to, oh yeah, we're going to send Evans here. 80% chance. Oh, and he's going to be gunned out. So, a Hurdle atones for his error. And guns out Evans trying to score. Keeping it a one nothing Kansas City lead. So Joe Zeb leads it off. Ground, flew out in the first and grounded out in the fourth. He'll ground out to Remy. The first out of the sixth. So L. Cowens. Go for one with a walk up to the plate now. Gets himself his first hit of the day, a single up the middle. Scott will hold him on. Amos Otis looking for his first hit of the day. We'll get it here as he hits one in the center. Routine fly ball. Lynn ranges over and makes the catch. So two gone in the Kansas City sixth. Brings up Daryl Porter. 0 for 1 with a walk. He'll line out to Scott. And that'll do it for Kansas City in the sixth. So it remains 1-0 Kansas City as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Split off pitching a shutout so far through five. Top of the order, Burleson. Got the first Red Sox hit with a double back in the fourth. One for two on the day. This time he's going to get his second hit with a single up the middle. So Burleson is on. And I think Remy is a good bunter here. I think he's a B, he's an A bunter. Yeah, we're going to have Remy bunt here. So corners are going to play in. Remy lays down the bunt. Porter has it. Throws the first. It's a successful bunt for Remy. Gets the job done as he gets high five going back into the dugout. So Burleson in scoring position now for Rice. Flew out in the first and was hit by a pitch in the fourth. So we have the five call. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Hurdles under it. Pounds his it and makes the catch. So let's see if Fisk can deliver here. 
looking for his first hit of the game. Now would be a good time. And he's going to deliver with a hit to right. And we're going to test his arm again. So 70% chance for Burleson. So we're going to send him. And... Ah, Burleson gets nailed by Hurdle. And a close play there as, as Porter blocks the plate. So twice Hurdle has thrown out. He's got two outfield assists now. Keeping it a one nothing game. So that is it for the Red Sox as Bill Leo come to the mound in the seventh here, still trailing one nothing. Lee has pitched a great good game so far, only allowing three hits in just that lone run. Wathen has one of those three hits, got a double back in the fifth. And he's going to fly out to Lynn. Probably Lee's best outing of the year so far. Unfortunately, he hasn't gotten any run support. Let's check on the games again. California ahead of Baltimore 3-2. to Oakland shutting out Cleveland 5 nothing. Detroit ahead of Seattle 5-3. to Minnesota all over the Yankees 7-3. That's good news. Oh, Milwaukee has taken the lead though. And a slugfest. Leading Toronto 12 to 10. Chicago shutting out Texas 7 0. So here comes Hurdle. He's thrown out two would be run scorers, keeping this a 1 0 game. At the plate, he's 0 for 2. And strikes down, strikes out swing for out number two. Frank White has himself an RBI double. Gets a good one to hit here. And makes him pay as Rice and Lynn cannot get to it. It hits the wall. White is at second with a double. A chance for the Royals to add to their lead here. Brings up Jerry Terrell. He's flown out twice. And this time he'll ground out to Remy to end the inning. So nothing doing for Kansas City. It's seventh inning stretch time. Here's a trivia question brought to you by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags. Who was the first bonus baby to receive a six-figure bonus in 1951? Mantle, maybe? It's either going to be Mickey Mantle or I'm going to guess Willie Mays, but I'm going to go with, I guess, Mickey Mantle. So let's see who that is. Lock in your answers. Paul Pettit. I haven't even heard of him. <laughs> so Paul Pettit. Pettit was the first who received a six figure bonus. Wow. 1951. That was a ton of money back then. So, all right, so thank you, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags, for that trivia question there. So, Bob Bailey will lead it off here in the seventh. Had a chance to tie the game, but grounded out back in the fourth. Struck out in the second. And he'll ground out to White. Up with it over the Wathen. First out of the Red Sox seventh. Fred Lynn up now. 0 for 2 so far today. He grounds out to Wathen. So two gone in the Red Sox 7th. Brings up Dwight Evans. 1 for 2. Reach on a single in the 5th. Advancing to 2nd on the air by Hurdle. But was later thrown out trying to score by Hurdle. And that's going to be grounded to White. Score that one a 4-3, and that's it for the Red Sox in the seventh. So the Red Sox have been unable to score off Splitroff and trail at one nothing, headed to the eighth. And it looks like Bill Lee's going to be out there for his eighth inning of work. No action in the Red Sox pen yet. 
Patek over three so far. Make that one for four as he gets a single pass Burleson. So lead off runner is on for the Royals. So I'm stirring in the Red Sox pen now. Joe Zeb up now. And Patek cannot seem to get a good lead here. It's going to be a hit and run this time though. And ooh, Jim Rice, range check. One to six will be a hit. Come on, stay off that. Gets in front of it, good. That's a little difficulty with it, but ends up making the catch. So one out in Patek at first for Al Cowens. Al Cowan singled his last time up, one for three on the one, one for two on the day with a walk. Scott holding on Patek. It's going to be a ground ball to Scott. Range check here. Gets it. Oh, oh! I just thought that was going to be an error there. Throws the second and gets the lead runner. And back to first double play. So Scott turns a 3-6, starts a 3-6-3 double play. So good job by the Boomer, and he'll lead it off for the Red Sox here in the eighth. Still down by a run. Scott 0 for 2. And make that 0 for 3 as he lines out to White for out number 1. Boy Chobson 1 for 2, singled his last time up. And this time gets under one and flies out to Wilson, who's now playing left. Didn't see that. So Clinton Hurdle's day is done, and Willie Wilson is playing left field. So the Red Sox are currently two and a half games out. Behind the Milwaukee Brewers. So if the scores rain, remain the same, the Red Sox will be three and a half games out. So Rick Burleson comes up with two outs. He's having a good day, two for three with a double. And he'll line out to his counterpart to end the inning. So f through eight, the Red Sox trail one nothing. So it looks like they're going to let Bill Lee come out and start the ninth here. Otis 0 for three on the day. So we ground ball back to Lee. He's a three range. Gets in front of it. Ooh, he commits a lot of errors here, though. Kind of worried about this. Ooh, and is able to handle it. Underhands it to Scott for out number one. So Daryl Porter, he's over two of the walk. Pops this one up to Scott. Scott's there and makes the catch. Calls it. So John Wathen, one for three with a double. And he's going to ground up to Remy. So the Royals go one, two, three in the ninth. So Lee with a fine performance. Hopefully it will not get wasted. But Splitchoff is going to try to get the complete game shut out here. Red Sox will send Remy, Rice, and Fisk. If anybody gets on Bailey, and we're probably going to have a pinch, well, we'll definitely will have a pinch hitter for Bailey if, if uh, he gets up to the plate. Let's hope he does. So Remy 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. Strikes out swing for out number 1. So Splitchoff with his third K of the day. Has not walked a batter. Jim Rice 0 for 2. Hit by a pitch back in the 4th. And that's going to be ball 4. So Rice will reach on the one-out walk. So the time runs on board for Fisk. He singled his last time up back in the sixth. As Porter goes out to talk to Splitchoff, make sure they're on the same page. Wathen will hold him on. And it's going to be up to six column. Oh, this is going to be a ground ball to Patek. Let's see what happens here. Range check on Patek. Gets in front of it. 
Is he going to be able to turn two, though? We'll see. This could be the end of the game here. Over to White uh, for first, and they do, and that'll do it as Kansas City holds on and shuts out the Red Sox 1-0. So Bob Bailey does not get a chance to be the hero. <laughs> what a shame. So, Splitshoff was masterful today, allowing only scattering five hits, not allowing a run. So, let's check the box score on this one. Perhaps Mr. Brody saw that coming and decided to, didn't want to see it. So, Kansas City wins the series. So, Bill Lee pitched a masterful game. Fortunately, does not get any run support as he was outdueled by Splitchoff. So Paul Splitchoff with the win is now 16 and 5. Nine innings pitch, five hits allowed. No runs. One walk and three strikeouts. Bill Lee goes the distance and gets the loss. Pitches nine innings, allows five hits, just the one run. Two walks and a strikeout. That lone run scored it back in the fifth. So the Royals, not much to say for either team defensively. Let's just go over who got hits. Patek, one for four. Cowens, one for three. Wathen, one for f four, scoring the winning run. And Frank White was two for three with an RBI. For the Red Sox, Burleson had a couple of hits, two for four. Fisk, one for four. Evans, one for three. And Hobson, one for three. So we're going to give player of the game. We have to give it to Splitchoff, who pitched the complete game. But um, we're going to give a runner-up to Clint Hurdle, who gunned down two two runners at the plate, Evans and I'm not sure who the other guy was, but I know he threw out two runners. Oh, Burleson, Evans and Burleson. So the Red Sox go down to the Kansas City Royals. And let's check the... Uh, Check our box score here. Let me check our standings. So let's see here. Did Milwaukee end up losing? Looks like they might have. Yes, Milwaukee. So, ended up losing. Excellent. So, they don't lose any ground. The Yankees also lost. So, no changes in the first three positions there. And Baltimore ended up winning. So, Baltimore's closed. Eh, there's still eight games out, though. So, tight race to the AL East, their first three positions. Kansas City, with the win, remains tied with... Actually, is now tied with the California Angels who have lost two in a row. So Kansas City back in a tie for first place with the California Angels. So that is it. So let's check out our next team we're going to play here. Let's leave this open here just to see the record of the next team we're going to play. So we're nearing the end, the last day of July here. We may play that game tonight just to get over the month of July so we can do a uh, season uh, summary so far up through July. So they're going to be facing the Chicago White Sox. So the White Sox are currently 48 and 54. So hopefully we can beat up on them a little bit. Play the games through. So, so Milwaukee gets a win. The Yankees get a win. So we're going to have to get a win to keep pace there. So it's going to be Ken Kravick on the mound for the Chicago White Sox against Dennis Eckersley. So thank you for joining me. It's Renier from Higher Ground Gaming. My co-host, Mr. Brody, Miss Mags. Wishing Miss Mags a happy birthday. And there's Mr. Brody laying on Miss Mags' bed there. So take care, God bless, and we'll see you in the next 1978 Red Sox video using Stratomatic Baseball. Bye-bye.